Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 14th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it must be nice to be a bad guy that develops a malware because you get to take an entire month off over the holidays and New Year. At least that's what it looks like for the Hankitor malware. This is malware that uh, Brad Duncan has been tracking for quite a few years now. And uh, well, uh, last year on the 17th of December, the malware went quiet. No new samples had been discovered, but all for a sudden on Tuesday, it started up again, so I guess their vacation was over. That's uh, also kind of a sign of how professionalized some of these malware teams have become. And really, the malware sort of picked up where it left off back in December. So not really a lot of changes here or sort of development during the time they went offline. It starts with a DocuSign email, a fake DocuSign email that asks you to click to view an invoice, which then will send you to a Google hosted document. Google common theme that we have seen also and talked about uh, last year is uh, sort of becoming a favorite uh, hosting facility for a lot of these malicious document. And then the document, of course, when you open it, it's a Word document, will ask you to enable macros because apparently the document is protected. At least that's what it pretends to be. So really good old Word macros are then being used to download additional malware. One interesting thing that Brad notes with Hankitor is that as long as the user that's being infected here is connected to an active directory environment, it will download Cobalt Strike. Of course, attackers may use the fact that you are part of an Active Directory domain as a sign that uh, you're part of a larger organization, larger enterprise, and uh, maybe it's then worthwhile taking a closer look at your system. And Intel, together with Cyber Reason, uh, did announce that they are going to release what they're calling hardware-based uh, ransomware protection. Now, this will be part of Intel's uh, V Pro line of processors. And what a V Pro really means, it is a standard Intel processor, but then typically comes with a bunch of hardware add-ons in order to allow more manageability and also additional security. Security features. Now, at this point, it's a little bit difficult to sort of uh, sift through the press releases uh, to see how uh, this particular feature is exactly going to work and uh, what it's uh, sort of differentiating it from, for example, classic anti malware. But in short, I believe they hope by more tightly integrating uh, this. Uh, anti-ransomware logic with the CPU, they'll be able to not only execute faster, but also use, for example, telemetry from the CPU itself to detect behavior typical for ransomware. And when I talked about the Microsoft patches this week, I pointed out uh, this vulnerability was addressed in exchange that, uh, well, really sort of was a incomplete uh, patched vulnerability from last year. And one of the things I pointed out also was that, hey, uh, this is only exploitable if you're actually authenticated to the exchange server. Well, we now got a blog post by Steven Seeley who uh, discovered uh, this original uh, vulnerability, explaining a little bit uh, the process that he used to discover the vulnerability and also that Office 365 is vulnerable to this problem as well. And he was able uh, to actually exploit it and gain remote code execution on Microsoft's online or cloud-based Office 365 infrastructure. So pretty neat uh, kind of a blog post, in particular, if you're developing .NET uh, PowerShell, uh, that's essentially sort of uh, what he used here in the vulnerabilities that he attacked. 
And then, well, uh, not to miss it, because it also was uh, released on Tuesday, we have another set of patches, and these come from SAP, fixing 31 different vulnerabilities. One of uh, these issues, which actually is sort of an update to a security note that goes back to April 2018, has a CVSS score of 10 and then we have two vulnerabilities uh, with a CVSS score of 9.9. One is multiple vulnerabilities in the SAP business warehouse. Uh, the database interface apparently isn't uh, sanitizing SQL queries uh, correctly as well as a code injection in the SAP business warehouse and SAP business warehouse for HANA. These type of vulnerabilities are, of course, always uh, great for targeted attacks. And we have certainly seen some of uh, this exploited against similar products in the past. So don't waste any time. Patching is probably not that straightforward. Better get started uh, with it now. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.